Good afternoon, I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching on OneSpotMedia.com. One man is dead and two others injured after an early morning gun attack in Augustown, St. Andrew. The area is now tense as this is just the latest of a recent flare-up of violent acts in the community. The dead man has been identified as 35-year-old David Stewart, a correctional officer at the General Penitentiary. The flare-up has prompted Member of Parliament for East St. Andrew, Faval Williams, to call for a zone of special operations, Zoso, for the community. Now, our reporter Kirk Wright is in the area and now joins us with the latest. Kirk, what are you issues there. We'll get back to Kirk Wright in a few minutes. Police personnel were at Wilma's Boys School in St. Andrew early Monday morning following a threat issued by a student against a number of other students via a voice note. In a copy of the voice note, which our news team received, a male voice could be heard talking about carrying out acts of criminality at the institution. School principal Walton Small spoke with our news team this morning. There was a voice note that was sent over the social media, <coughs> which created some amount of concern. Um, we were aware of it. We um, have gotten the student, we have spoken to the student and parent, and it is being dealt with. The school community is extremely safe. Um, I doubt if um, more than 10% of the school knows about it. Meanwhile, the police high command says a high-level investigative team is now probing the threat. It says the matter is being treated with the highest level of attention. In the 10-minute, 35-second voice note, a teenager who identifies himself as a student of Wilma's Boys School threatens to carry out a mass killing. In the clip, he lists societal behavior and being ostracized by his friends as his motivation. In the meantime, the police high command is asking persons who may have information that can assist with the investigation to contact the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Branch, CTOC, at 967-1389-811 or Crime Stop at 311. The police are also urging individuals to desist from circulating the audio clip as it may cause undue anxiety at this time. Controversies on the horizon over the banking fees bill after it hit another hurdle in Parliament last Tuesday. Many in academia and government have clamped down on the bill brought to Parliament by St. Catherine South Member of Parliament Fitz Jackson as they contend that the banking fees cannot be regulated. But Mr. Jackson is still strongly contesting their argument, insisting that the bill is not about the regulation of bank fees. The details from TVJ's O'Shane Masters. A bill which seems to have the backing of most ordinary Jamaicans is finding it hard to make it through the rounds of Parliament. The Banking Services Bill brought to Parliament through a private member's motion by a member of Parliament, Fitz Jackson, has been hitting roadblocks since it entered Gordon House. The latest snag was last Tuesday when 30 government lawmakers rejected its passage in a close vote which saw 29 opposition legislators supporting the proposed law. Finance Minister Audishaw has urged Mr. Jackson to withdraw the measure and work with the government in developing a framework to address the concerns raised. Shaw told parliamentarians that 95% of the provisions in the Banking Services Bill were included in the Bank of Jamaica's Code of Conduct for deposit-taking institutions. But Mr. Jackson is adamant that the bill he brought to Parliament is one that will redound to the benefit of Jamaicans. The bill before the Parliament was not my bill. It was only in my name. It was a bill on behalf of the thousands of Jamaicans who lose their money on a daily basis. Last year, $40 billion were taken from your account and put in the pocket of some other persons. Speaking last night at a divisional meeting in Clarendon, he said banks are skimming people out of their hard-earned cash. He, however, sought to reiterate that the bill he brought to Parliament is not to regulate the banking sector. All the bill says, as a matter of principle, anybody who opens an account and put their money in there, you must allow that minimum amount of service at no charge. In other words, whatever costs associated 
with them providing the minimum service should not be treated any different than them utilities costs. The MP also lambasted comments from members of the academic community who stated that the bill would be better off dead. And I hear some in academia talking about how improper it is. We are going to disrupt the market. When slavery was about, it was an economic arrangement. And slavery had a benefit to some people who own slaves. I believe that these 30 government MPs who voted against the bill would have voted to keep slavery back then if they had the opportunity. Mr. Jackson says he will be taking back the banking services bill to Parliament in the upcoming legislative year. Rashid Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, South West St. Elizabeth Member of Parliament Floyd Green has commented on the banking services bill by Mr. Jackson. A piecemeal approach to banking reform. We have never been a party that believes that you must just look at profit and say because a man is making profit, something is wrong. He, however, notes that banking fees in the country are an issue which and the government plans to address. A financial oversight committee to treat with issues that customers have with banks. We take this issue very, very seriously because all of us. And we now go back to a story we had earlier as one man is dead and two others injured after an early morning gun attack in Augustown, St. Andrew. The area is now tense as this is just the latest in a flare-up of violent acts in the community. Our reporter Kirk Wright is there. Kirk, what have you been seeing since morning? Thank you so very much, Herman. Well, I'm in fact in the August town community and there's a police military presence now along August Town Road where 35-year-old David White, who was identified, Stuart, sorry, not White, Stuart, who was um, an officer and he was just about to open his pastry shop, we're told, when he was pounced on by men in a car. But um, as we've been told, it, it seemed as if this was an organized um, killing. Um, before the shooting here, which happened somewhere about 9 o'clock, um, persons reported hearing uh, shooting in the Elton Flat area. And about five minutes after that, um, this shooting in August Town, along August Town Road, took place. It is confirmed that uh, one man is dead. We were told that two others were also shot and injured. We're not sure about that. That's yet to be confirmed. But um, we spoke to the Member of Parliament not long ago, Favel Williams, um, who said that she will, you know, talking to the Prime Minister and hopefully get a zone of special operation in the August town community to quell the violence here. She, she calls what hap what's happening here as very disappointing because they've had several meetings with different stakeholders to try and quell the violence um, between gangs in this area, all of which seem to have come to naught so far. So she's hoping that she, she'll be, be able to make a case to get Zozo into the Augustown community just to stem the violence here. Herman? All right. Thank you, Kirk Wright, our reporter there in Augustown, as he follows uh, issues in that community since morning. Pressure continues to be mounted on Prime Minister Andrew Holness to fully appoint Justice Brian Sykes as the country's chief justice. Mr. Holness has been under intense pressure by members of the judiciary, the Confederation of Trade Unions and the opposition since the appointment of Justice Sykes as acting chief justice. Speaking in Clarendon last night, opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips said the prime minister seems to be playing a political game. Issue a statement that says, as soon as the constitutional arrangements can be completed, I will confirm the appointment of the Chief Justice. Solve everything. Nobody do have to leak nothing. Nobody now have to report what you're going to say. You can just say it yourself, but what happened? 
is tough, is hard. Is the National Water Commission, NWC, equipped to provide enough water for Jamaica should the island experience a drought this year? According to NWC CEO Mark Barnett, the NWC is ensuring that Jamaica has an adequate supply. However, he says the greatest threat to this is how Jamaicans consume water. Details in this report. How long will Jamaica last if there is no consistent rainfall for a number of months? National Water Commission NWC CEO Mark Barnett says the Hermitage Dam can last just over a month without consistent water running into it. If there is no flows going into any of those systems, um, for the Hermitage, which was just about 400 um, million gallons of water, and using a treatment plant that produces 20 million gallons of water, you can understand how much days if we are producing at the maximum. But in uh, how we operate, we never go on the maximum whenever time there is a reduced um, inflow. So a hermitage will not last us more than probably 40 days. He adds that currently, all the water storing facilities in Kingston are full thanks to consistent rainfall in the last few months. Mr. Barnett said during this time of the year, Jamaica would normally be experiencing a drought. However, not only is there enough water in storage, but the NWC is also preparing for the possibility of a drought. You plan for the uncertainty by doing a number of things. What, what, what are the, some of the things that we have control over. One, NWC, needs, we will look at increase our production in the event of, so mm -hmm. that our system becomes very resilient. And so what we are doing now is to look at putting in a new treatment facility under our Cobra. We are advancing those discussions. Coupled with that, we have to look at our internal infrastructure. How much is it wholesome and are we creating the same problem as, as consumers? So we are looking at how we reduce our losses. Mr. Barnett is encouraging Jamaicans to preserve water, which will help the NWC prepare. You are a huge part of the solution, and I, I do agree you have to look at how you use water. Public conserve. education. Public yeah. education is key. You have to now start to think of reducing your usage, take shorter showers, rather than running your pipe, washing the dish, fill the sink, you know, wash the dish, then rinse, use the same water to water your plants. All those type of things. Change out your toilets from the large three gallons to the one gallon flush toilet. These are some of the things. It will come at a cost, but it's still something that will benefit you in, in the long, long run. run. Mr. Barnett was speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica on Monday. Jaleen Pearson, TVJ News. Call it misfortune, but Opal Hines, a resident of New Forest in South Manchester, is frustrated as her house was once again destroyed by fire in a suspected case of arson. This is the third such case, which has now left her and her family close to desperation. Speaking with TVJ News, Ms. Hines says she was in Mandeville on December 24 when she received a call that her house was on fire. She has had to convert one of the burnt-out rooms into a bedroom, which she now occupies with her five children and a grandchild. She's therefore seeking urgent assistance. I'm begging anyone where can help me just to get back the building finish some mall blacksmiths or stuff. Ask the MP for a load of mall. Him tell me say, him we see what him can do. Him never tell me say me go get it. Him say, him we see what him can do. So, anyway, anyone can help me with little cement, any little thing at all. Me just want to get back in there. Cause I write on the tree there some stay and build this. You know, cause this is the third house they burn now for me now. We go down to news overseas in the U.S. In a twist into the election meddling of 2016, former Trump presidential campaign aide Rick Gates has agreed to testify against former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort. The details from the CNN. Time. Rick Gates is poised to serve about 18 months in prison. Now, let's, let me give you a little bit of context here. For the charges that he was facing, Gates could have faced upwards of 10 years in prison. This is someone who has four young children, a young family, was facing financial pressure. It would have been very expensive to go to trial, but he was also facing a lot of personal pressure from his loved ones to wrap this up quickly. Now, in terms of the investigation, this could potentially be a big deal in the Russia probe. The fact that Gates is willing to testify 
testify against Paul Manafort. Uh, you know, that obviously uh, is a coup for Bob Mueller, the special counsel, in building a case against Paul Manafort. But it could also mean putting additional pressure on Manafort to cooperate with this investigation. So Rick Gates' cooperation could actually be a building block for Bob Mueller for something bigger, potentially for charges against President Donald Trump or potentially for charges against one of Donald Trump's other associates. Now, we reported on Friday that Gates was nearing this plea deal, but it wasn't yet finished, that he was poised to cooperate with Bob Mueller. And at that time, the White House sort of downplayed the notion that Rick Gates could flip on Paul Manafort and sort of said, this doesn't really have anything to do with us. This doesn't have anything to do with the people who are in the West Wing. You know, if he wants to flip, if he wants to cooperate against Paul Manafort, that has to do with stuff that wasn't related to the presidential campaign or the transition. And that wraps up the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports, and production teams, good afternoon.